International Women's Day. A day that in 2023 can be whatever you want it to be. A day of celebration, a day of protest, or another PR day for corporations. International Women's Day is about the issues that involve women, not just domestically, but around the world. And our celebration of our freedom and opportunity. Some may see the future as dark. But we most definitely see the light. CEO of Concerned Women for America, Penny Nance, believes many have lost sight of the bigger issues women face. American women are um, able to, to achieve our dreams, right? And, uh, you know, you compare that to the fact that women around the world are deeply suffering. Schoolgirls in Iran who simply just want an education are being poisoned and terrorized. We know that in Afghanistan, that girls are being barred from their schools. It is outrageous what has happened to Afghani women. In many countries like Iran and Afghanistan, where women feel most compelled to protest, they are often unable to do so. And in the West, companies like Hershey's use the day as an opportunity to garner publicity. My name is Faye Johnstone. I'm the executive director of Wisdom to Action. I can't roll my eyes hard enough at Hershey Corporation. Give me a break. I mean, you know, I, I get it. It's kind of cute, Hershey, but... You know, at the same time, I'm so tired and American women are fought so hard to have equal representation, um, even in corporate America, right? And, you know, the little bit <laughs> of opportunity that we've gotten, now we have to share with men again. You know, I wonder where the early feminists are. I think the suffragists are rolling over in their graves right now. In New York, Sarah Williamson for Newsmax. All right, Sarah Williamson, thank you. And joining us now to discuss Beverly Hills plastic surgeon and entrepreneur, Dr. Sheila Nazarian, plus counterterrorism and foreign policy expert and editor-in-chief of The Foreign Desk, Lisa Doftari. Great to have you both with us here. Uh, Lisa, your reaction to what Sarah shared. Uh, we're, we see so much of this day, especially in the United States, being a major day for marketing campaigns to drop. I've gotten countless emails today from fashion brands and beyond. Uh, urging you to buy, of course, to celebrate being a woman, but mm -hmm. it's about so much more than that. It is about so much more than that. But ironically, here in the United States, where we do have a platform where we can share our voices and share messages that are important, uh, we focus on uh, somewhat more frivolous things than using our platforms to speak out about the women of Afghanistan or the women uh, in Iran or even the women here in this country who are victims to uh, domestic violence and, and, and many other ways cannot share their voices. So it's a reminder today that people around, the women around the world uh, are are not free and that they don't have those uh, platforms and they don't have the opportunities uh, like we do here in the United States. So today we celebrate the fact that we are women and that we are free and that we have the opportunity not to just to advocate for ourselves, but for people around the world. Sheila, I, I was maybe a little bit confused because I'm thinking it's International Women's Day. Of course, women have, have worked and fought so hard for voting rights and, and beyond. But then today I thought, okay, but it seems like our country, many people in our country can't even define what a woman is anymore. So is that honoring women? I, 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 it was hard for me because it just kind of gets you into a little bit of a, of a spin to try to really understand uh, what's happening you. here in this country. No, I agree with you. And I think Lisa and I, who both um, were lucky enough to be in the United States, like even this morning, some of my physician colleagues were talking about how much inequality there is in the U.S. and, you know, how, you know, this and that. And I, I came on my Instagram and I was like, I am so grateful to be in this country. The world is never going to be totally fair. The world is never going to be have perfect equality. And that's OK. Use it as a driver to motivate you. You know, yes, were there things that as a female surgeon could have held me back? Did I let them? Absolutely not. I'm so grateful to be in this country where talent, grit, um, motivation, and perseverance can lead to success. Whereas look at Iran, look at our sisters in Iran who, like it was said in the previous segment, which I loved, they don't even get a chance to go to school. They're getting poisoned for being part of protests. So this is what our families left Iran on the back of trucks to bring us to America, to help us avoid, to give us a chance. So I have no problem as a physician defining a woman. Um, I wish more and more people would have less distractions like that in the U.S. and really focus on 
the people that are really suffering from oppression and inequality. Uh, Lisa, uh, going back to uh, the lack of women's rights in Iran, where do you see that going? Do you see it evolving? Do you think do you see it getting better? Um, well, their rights aren't getting any better, and that's exactly their message. The message of this revolution is that they do not want reform under this government. They only want regime change, and that's the only way they see uh, a way forward and a way for the future. Now, if this is not their chance for a revolution, for a regime change, this movement is not going away. You cannot stop this momentum. You cannot stop women who have seen, uh, you know, other women or children or young men being brutally murdered for merely peacefully protesting on the streets this time around. So I think they've awoken the beast inside the Iranian people. They're not going to back down. I do think that this is the best chance they've ever had in 44 years at a chance for regime change and a chance for the international community as much as we do uh, criticize the mainstream media uh, for not giving this the, the, the airtime that it deserves, this Iranian revolution. We do criticize the Biden administration for, um, although they backed away from the JCPOA, the, the getting back into an Iran nuclear deal, they're not fully supporting the Iranian people the way that they can, and they have the resources to do so. They have said many times that they will not verbally support regime change inside Iran. So despite all those criticisms, I do think this is the best chance that the Iranian people have had, and that momentum is not going anywhere anytime soon. Look, we looked at the Arab Spring uh, of 2010. We looked at the uh, Green Revolution of 2009. This is an awakening all throughout the region. And the, these young people, whether it's social media that has taught them, whether it's, you know, just generational, listening to their parents' stories, this is a movement that will not go anywhere anytime soon. So the Iranian people are telling us they have outgrown this government. It is a brutal government and they want changes. And Sheila, last words for you. Uh, I know you mentioned, of course, your sisters, the women in Iran on this International Women's Day. What message do you have for them? I think the message that I have is when women do something like this, it is not just for themselves alone. This is for their sisters, this is for their daughters, and this is for their grandchildren. This is for future generations. And just like Lisa said, when you're thinking like that, it's not something you give up so easily and it's definitely not going away. So more power to them. All right. Well, I appreciate you both being here with me and sharing, of course, these, these great stories. And I'm happy that both of you are in the United States. And I can tell you're proud to be here. So thank you, Dr. Shula Nazari and Lisa Daftari. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.